Welcome back to the Urban Farmyard where this city girl goes country. In today's video we're looking at how to build a pet friendly wardrobe. Let's go take a look. Well, if you have a lot of pets in your household, you will know that it can be difficult to deal with cat and dog fur. So today we're taking a throwback Thursday look at how I've built a pet friendly wardrobe. Let's go take a look. Now for those of you who have been watching these videos for a little while, you will know that there is a huge number of animals in this house, an above average number of animals. Currently we have seven cats, my six plus a foster cat. We have three dogs, two chinchillas, two goats, three hens and two Flemish giant rabbits. And that ultimately means there is a huge amount of fur floating around the house. And I still like to be pretty well presented. I still like to live in a house that doesn't look like it's overrun with animals and doesn't look like it's overrun with cat fur. And over the last decade, I've become a little bit of an expert in cultivating a wardrobe that doesn't make me look like a completely mad cat lady. Now, this is not to say I ever leave the house completely fur free. Um, with this number of animals I'm still going to have a level of cat and dog fur lurking in my life that's just one of the realities of having animals but what I do have is a wardrobe that is much less likely to attract fur much less likely to retain fur and much less likely to show fur and it's got to a point when I'm shopping shop assistants laugh because I will go through racks and clothes and say nope that's going to attract cat fur nope that's not fur friendly can't buy that and I thought it was a a little bit unusual until I was in Ricochet in Auckland one day and they said to me oh you're just like the mums who come in here. Now I don't have human children only fur children and I didn't realize that mums also cultivate wardrobes that are relatively child friendly so they are relatively immune or at least disguise the pitfalls of having children. So, when it comes to cultivating a fur-friendly wardrobe, what have I done? The first thing is I have completely eliminated black cotton from this house. Anyone who comes in here wearing black cotton or black wool for that matter is going to leave looking like they have been in a mad cat lady's house, and they have. Black cotton and black wool are dreadful, dreadful things when it comes to animals. They just attract fur and the fur just stays there. It looks horrendous, so I don't wear them anymore. The second thing I've done is I have started buying a palette that, and it's going to sound completely mad, a palette of clothes that or a palette of colours that match the animals. Now, I know that sounds completely ludicrous, but here's the thinking. If the colours that I am wearing are relatively similar to the colour of the animals in my house, whatever remnants of cat or dog or chinchilla fur that are on my clothing are going to be relatively disguised. So let me show you how that works. So if you look at what I'm wearing today, I'm wearing pale grey mull, and I must say that grey mull is one of my favourites. It disguises a multitude of fur, and if you have a look, Holly and I blend in pretty quickly. So despite the fact that she's an exotic short hair with a double coat and is molting everywhere at the moment, I don't look completely overrun with cat fur. Let's pop her down. The other thing that I tend to wear is a huge amount of denim. So I've got denim jeans on today. That's one of my staples. And I also have a number of denim jackets. I love these because denim is a product that fur kind of slips off. We've got a couple of little bits of fur lurking on this darker denim jacket here, but it does a reasonably good job of disguising it. What I have found is the mid-tones of denim, so something more like this, is a lot more cat friendly or animal friendly than the darker tones, but again that's going to depend on just how light or dark your cats are. If you've got a house full of black animals, then your black tones or your darker tones are probably going to be more fur friendly, but denim is wonderful. And in those situations where you do need to do a quick brush down with a lint remover, it's super fast on denim. Next up, I wear a lot of patterns. So here is a gorgeous pair of trousers that I think came from Q Design. And 
an amazing floral shift dress which I picked up in New York. Now with the outdoor animals, so for example the goats, anything that is very very pale is not that user friendly because they do have a tendency to jump up for cuddles and you get hoof prints down your front. But when it comes to the other animals it's actually pretty animal friendly. These patterns help to disguise a multitude of sins. They disguise fur and they disguise whatever grubby paw prints they have landed on you on a given day. So they are well and truly recommended. One of the other things that I've started to wear quite a lot of are silky fabrics. Now, silky fabrics can be great and can be terrible. It depends on which ones you pick up. Some fabrics like raw silk I probably wouldn't recommend because they're not always the best when it comes to cat claws, but when it comes to pretty much repelling fur, they are amazing. This is an incredible patterned dress which I bought in New York, which is wonderful. It is so slippery that there's actually not a skerrick of cat fur on it, simply because it just, well, it just falls off really. And while I don't wear black wool or black cotton anymore, black chiffon is something that I do wear, again, because it is relatively fur friendly. There is, I think, two pieces of cat fur that I can see. The rest of it has just slipped off. Again, chiffon when it comes to claws, you do need to be a little bit careful not to get snagged, but when it comes to dealing with fur, this is pretty amazing. Now, if you have animals in your house, you are never going to be able to prevent cat fur from attaching itself to absolutely everything. But there are three really good antidotes which help immensely. The first is choosing your wardrobe really carefully, and the type of fabrics and patterns that I've shown you here today really do work wonders. The next thing you're going to need, and you've probably got a bunch of them, is a lint remover. The style that I prefer is the kind that's got sticky paper on it and just rolls over and then tears off. The reason why I prefer that is unlike the old fabric style of lint removers, they don't do a lot of damage to fabric. What I found with the old fabric style of lint remover is they actually started to destroy the fabric over time. You'd start to get bobbly bits if you were constantly rubbing at them to get rid of fur. So I've gotten rid of all of those in this house and I've now gone to the sticky paper version. The third thing which is going to be your absolute best friend is your dryer. That's right, your dryer. With anything that you wear in a house full of animals, you are still going to get a level of fur that you need to deal with and get rid of at some stage. And there's only so much that a lint remover is going to get rid of. What I've found is washing your clothes and then putting them through the dryer works wonders. The dryer sucks all that fur off and you end up with it in the lint container of the dryer. And if you have a look at my dryer on an on, on average day, pretty much everything that's coming off those clothes is an assortment of grey shades of fur. It's quite amazing. So there we go. There we have it. Cultivating a fur-friendly wardrobe. The Many of you are going to find this highly unusual, and yes it is highly unusual, but it is also highly practical if, like me, you are a mad cat or dog lady who would prefer not to look quite so mad and fur covered on an average day. So I hope that's been helpful and I will see you back here tomorrow.